squash and squash once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Today, I'm back with fruit of the day, the one and only delicata squash. Now, maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you've never heard of it. Maybe you don't even know what it is. Well, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the delicata squash. All right, first up, just a little bit of background information. Delicata squash is an edible gourd, maybe known as winter squash, related to the cucumber, watermelon, and the musk melon. Wow, who knew? Also, with a favor sorry flavor similar to the sweet potato chestnut and corn the flesh of the delicata squash is sweet so if you're like coach d and you love sweet fruit then you probably want to become a little more familiar with delicata squash all right now it's time to dive into a few fun facts Delicata squash is also called bohemian squash, sweet potato squash, or peanut squash. I guess that's based on how it looks. It's best to choose a squash that does not have any scratches or bruises to avoid quick spoilage. Lastly, when choosing delicata squash, look for one that's firm and heavy with a cream color. One that's ready to eat usually is yellow or cream with green striations. You should be able to store them in a cool, dry place for about three months. So, if you're like me and you're new to gourds, you're new to different types of squash, whether it's delicata squash, uh, acorn squash, right, and you don't quite know how to cook it, <laughs> well, you got three months to do so. <laughs> All right, so there we have it, guys. A few fun facts about the one and only delicata squash. All right, now it's time for the not so fun facts. As with any food, taking note of an unusual reaction such as itching or swelling is important, but there are no known problems with the delicata squash. However, because of its fiber content, too much could cause flatulence. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to this type of fruit, then you may want to try eating a little bit before you eat a lot. Remember, it's, a, it's an excellent source of fiber, so too much fiber in your digestive system at one time could cause flatulence. So there we have it, guys, a few not-so-fun facts about delicata squash. All right, now it's time to dive into the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about food labels. Basically, it helps us to learn how to read and understand food labels. Ultimately, ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food item or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, specifically, when we talk about the 520 rule, ultimately, we're talking about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, it is highlighted in three different colors. I'll go color by color. First, let's take a look at the purple portion, which says percent daily value. And as you can see, based on our sample food label, that percent daily value is basically shown as a percentage sign, right? It could be as low as 0% to as high as 100%. Now, let's take a look at the yellow portion. The yellow portion basically highlights a few nutrients that unfortunately do a really good job at promoting disease within the human body. So say hello to saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Now, once again, when it comes to these nutrients, because they do a really good job at promoting sickness, illness, and disease within the body temple, you definitely want to be sure that the percent daily value is as close to zero as possible. Now, let's take a look at the blue nutrients, such as dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Well, unlike the yellow nutrients, the blue nutrients do just the opposite. Rather than promote illness, they promote health and wellness within the body temple. So if anything, you want to make sure that 
whatever you're eating or drinking, that these percents are as close to 100% as possible. Now, let's be a little more specific when we talk about the 520 rule. Guys, if a food item or beverage item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or bever beverage item is considered not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is said to be a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered to be an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now it's time to dive into the nutrition facts. Now, what this basically means is that whenever we eat deli cotta squash, this is what we're going to put into our bodies. Now, for the sake of today's lecture, we're going to simply say that a single serving of deli cotta squash is equivalent to one cup. So here we go. In this single serving, one cup, we're only going to get about 82 calories, 21.5 grams of carbs, and look at this, 1.8 grams of protein. And most people think that fruit doesn't contain protein. Well, <laughs> there we have it. Also, only 0.2 grams of fat. And check this out, 2 to 4 grams of fiber per cup. Now, let's dive into the <clears throat> vitamins and minerals. First up is vitamin A, coming in at a whopping 457% DV. Now, earlier I stated that the maximum could be 100% when it comes to percent daily value. Well, actually, I was mistaken. A single serving, which is one cup of deli cotta squash, is going to provide us with 457% DV. So what this basically means is that one cup is going to provide us with approximately four and a half days worth of vitamin A. How cool is that? Next up is vitamin C coming in at 52% DV. Now that's an excellent source. Next up is manganese coming in at 18% DV. Good source. Then we have potassium coming in at 17% DV. Good source. Vitamin E coming in, coming in at 13% DV. Good source. Vitamin B6 coming in at 13% DV. Good source. Then it's thiamine coming in at 10% DV. Good source. Niacin, 10% DV. Good source. Folate also coming in at 10% DV. Good source. Next up is calcium coming in at 8% DV. Not a good source. Iron, 7% DV. Not a good source. Copper, 7% DV. Not a good source. And lastly is phosphorus coming in at 6% DV. Not a good source. So there we have it, guys. The nutrition facts of the delicata squash. All right, now let's dive into the health benefits. But before we do, Coach D wants to offer you just a little bit of words of wisdom. Guys, at this time, I want to talk with you about the principle of cause and effect. Now, some of us may already be familiar with this principle. Why? Because it's one of the seven hermetic principles. Basically, this principle states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. Now, here's what we need to understand is that the nutrient contents or the, uh, the nutrition facts that we just went over, basically those are the causes and the health benefits are the effects. So let's see what happens once we put deli cotta squash into our bodies. Number one, it's a great gluten-free option. So this is amazing for those of us who suffer from celiac disease or any type of gluten intolerance. Next up, deli cotta squash provides lots of fiber. Now, if you've seen many of my videos, you probably are already familiar with the fact that I like to call fiber nature's plumber, right? It keeps our tubes clean. It helps to clean out the cholesterol in your arteries. It also helps to clean out the extra waste that's lodged in your colon. <laughs> Next up, uh, delicata squash helps healthy cell production. 
Now, we got to say thank you to iron. Why? Because it's the one phytonutrient that helps healthy cell production. Also, builds healthy bones. Now, which uh, mineral does that? Well, say hello to calcium. Also, calcium reduces our risk of osteoporosis. Next up, deli uh, cotta squash may enhance eyesight. Now, we got to say thank you to vitamin A for that. And lastly, uh, deli cotta squash helps keep you free from illness. Now, that's great. And the reason is because, well, it's high in vitamin C. So there we have it, guys. Lots and lots of health benefits from the one and only delicata squash. All right, now it's time to talk about food. Guys, say hello to ForksOverKnives.com, which, by the way, is our go-to website for everything vegan. By the way, there is a movie entitled Forks Over Nice, which I highly recommend you watch. Now, as usual, I went to the website, did just a little bit of research, and look at what I found. Two amazing vegan delicata squash recipes that I want to share with you right now. So the first one is delicata squash with Creole quinoa stuffing. Take a look at the picture. Looks amazing. Now, our second recipe is entitled delicata squash boats with cauliflower bechamel. Take a look at that picture. Looks delicious. Now, if you are so inclined, please go to the website, which is ForksOverKnives.com, and you're going to find a lot of great information. As a matter of fact, all you have to do is go to the description box. Why? Because I'm providing with you with a direct link to each of these recipes. Now, once you get there, you're going to find some great information. You're going to find an ingredient list, you're going to find the instructions, and you're going to find the cooking time. So basically, ForksOverKnives.com is going to provide you with everything that you need to know in order to make these delicious, nutritious dishes. So there we have it, guys. Not one, but two vegan delicata squash recipes from ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, Coach D, Thanks for the fun facts and the not so fun facts. Coach D, I really appreciate the two recipes, but what I really want to know is when should I eat more delicata squash? Well, 23% Nation, if that's your question, then I got to tell you that the best day, and I do mean the best day to eat more delicata squash, is Nature Day. What? Nature Day? Yes, Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, maybe you know nothing about the challenge. Well, here we go. The 23% challenge is basically a monthly seven-day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here's the thing about the challenge is that it is the first seven days of every single month. The first all the way through the seventh. Now, being that it's the first seven days of every month and Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, well, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every month. So whether it's April 1st, June 1st, or even July 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right. Now, some of us may want to know a little more about Nature Day. Some of us are interested, some of us are intrigued, right? So we want to know. Coach D, what in the world is Nature Day all about? Well, guys, Nature Day, the sole purpose is to return back to nature. Guys, it's time to put the good stuff in. That way the bad stuff can come out, <laughs> okay? Now, maybe you're the type of person who is considering transitioning to a more plant-based diet. Maybe you're the type of person who has heart disease. Maybe you have cancer. Maybe you have type 2 diabetes. Or maybe you are obese and you're looking for a holistic solution to your issues. Well, guys, here we go. Today, I want to provide you with four different avenues that I believe can help make your transition to a more whole food plant-based diet easier. So first, I want to introduce you to a 3% vegan. Now, a 3% vegan is anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. 
Now, some of you may be thinking, well, which one day should that be? It's easy. Make it nature day. Remember, it's the first day of the month. Next up, try to become a 10% vegan, which translates to three days out of an entire month. Now, what is a 10% vegan? It's easy. It's anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Next up, try to become a 17% vegan, which equates to five days out of an entire month. Now, you could do the first five days of the month and you would be perfect. Now, this is anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water five days out of an entire month. And lastly is a 23% vegan, which technically is what Coach D considers himself to be. Now, for this one, this is the first seven days of the month where I only eat plant foods that come from the five food groups of plant foods. Now, they happen to be fruits, vegetables and herbs, uh, legumes, meaning beans and peas, nuts and seeds, and let's not forget about whole grains. And my only beverage that I am allowed to consume is good old water. So there we have it, guys. If you're interested in eating more plants, then try to become a 3%, 10%, 17%, or the ultimate 23% vegan. All right. Now, because I want your Nature Day to be successful, I want to offer you a few tips, some advice, a little bit of help. So here we go. Coach these tips for Nature Day. Tip number one, go to your local grocery store. Now, when you get there, you basically are going to go to two places. Number one is going to be the produce section. Number two is going to be the freezer aisle. Now, the reason why you want to go to the produce section is because that's where all of your fresh plant foods are located. Why do you want to go to the freezer aisle? Well, that's where all of your frozen plant foods are located. Now, some of you may be wondering, what's the difference between fresh versus frozen or which is better, right? Well, believe it or not, the nutrient content of fresh versus frozen plant foods is pretty much the same, right? The only difference would be how soon are you going to eat your plant foods? If you're the type of person who loves to eat their, their plant foods the moment you get them home, then go for the fresh options. If you're the type of person who likes to delay eating your plant foods, then go ahead and get the frozen options. Tip number two, go visit your local farmer's market. Now, I highly recommend this for those of us who must eat organic plant foods. Here's the thing about farmer's markets is that they only cater to the organic plant food market. So if you're looking for organic plant foods, definitely head to your local farmer's market. Here's my next tip. Go to the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So once you're done with the freezer aisle and the produce section, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, when you talk to the person behind the counter, ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian options. Ask for a quick sample, and if you like it, purchase your food by the pound or maybe even two pounds if you really, really like it. My next tip is to go visit a vegan restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to support the wellness community. So, visiting your local vegan restaurant will be an amazing adventure. Here's one of the main reasons to go visit a vegan restaurant is because they hire vegan chefs who basically know not only how to cook plant foods, but they also know which plant foods to cook together to give you the most delicious, most nutritious dishes. And my last tip to help make your Nature Day successful is to get on the subscription of a vegan meal prep company. Now, this is for those of us who don't know how to cook plant foods, those of us who don't want to cook plant foods, right? Let someone else do it for you. Here's the thing. They make it, they deliver it, you eat it. It's just that simple. So there you have it, guys. Five tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day, which comes from yours truly and the rest of the 23% Nation. We want to know, true or false, deli Delicata squash is an excellent source of vitamin A. Now, I believe I covered that earlier in the video. So if you missed it, please rewind. If you got it and you're ready to answer the question, just simply type your answer in the comment box below. 
Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share the video, especially if you love Delicata Squash. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out, but always remember to take care, God bless, and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.